Susie DeYoung. I'm here with Dr. John Woodall, founder of the Unity Project. This is the fifth in our series of videos. In our past one, we looked at, well, in our past four, we've looked at how trauma uh, plays out in our intimate relationships, our parenting, and our community. Now we're going to talk with Dr. Woodall about how it plays a role in fostering a culture of peace mm -hmm. nationwide. Mm -hmm. And I know I've heard from a number of people that uh, rarely, if ever, out of a traumatic event, mm -hmm. um, does such a group of, of unity come come forward as has happened in yeah. Newtown? Yeah. Um, that there has been so many, uh, so much of a show of strength and togetherness, and people have commented that they've been very impressed by that. Yeah, me too. I think we all feel that it's it's very exciting and it's very rare. So we have something. You know, I just I was thinking of the word precious. It it really is precious. That it's something to be proud of, but also uh, protective of. And, you know, this requires nurturing and protection. And in the last video, we talked about that tendency towards that rigidity that can take away from the progress that we've made. Um, some of the things we were talking about have to do with how we find ourselves in this position where the, the world's attention or the nation's attention are, is on us. And in one way, that's kind of intrusive and, and uncomfortable. And some people would rather that we didn't have to shoulder the burden of being the example to the world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I feel that way too sometimes. But, the, well, but we find ourselves in that position. So there's some balance to be struck. you know. And we're not doing the work we're doing for someone else's... Um, uh, to show off to the rest of the world or to be on the media. But we should be aware that our actions have an effect mm -hmm, elsewhere. Definitely. I was just told two nights ago by a, a man from Pakistan that the work of the Interfaith Council here in uh, Newtown ch completely changed the way people talk about America. Really? In, wow. Because of the example of, New, of Newtown. Wow. Because of what they saw in that interfaith uh, vigil that we had, so who would have thought? Yeah. You know, yeah. um, you know. Uh, so that's an example of of how, in so many ways, this community has risen up with this common vision, even though we're using slightly different words. Mm -hmm. And um, didn't you have a conversation recently with a local uh, real estate yeah. person in town? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, the same person told me two different things over the course of about six weeks. Right after the, the, the tragedy, uh, a week or so after he said, this absolutely brought to nothing the requests for real estate in Newtown. Six weeks later, after these examples of like that interfaith uh, vigil, the Sandy Hook Promise, things going on with the Unity Project, things going on with Newtown Action Alliance, all these different things showing the, the unity and the resolve and the vision of people in Newtown, mm -hmm. He said now they're getting more requests than ever because people want to live in a town like that. And I think the cool thing about that is it would only attract people who think that way. Who, you know, people with a vision, people who want to demonstrate that to their kids. So mm -hmm. who, who knew? That's interesting. Yeah. Fascinating. So the, the, this notion of the Sandy Hook promise, I just wanted to talk about that for a little bit. And I'm not formally a member, but I guess I want to be a, 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 a you know, a, an honorary <laughs> member. So, but th this notion of a vision that we can be better, you know, this can bring out the better angels of our nature, this, as Lincoln said, mm -hmm. and that we can engage in a new kind of dialogue. That is a critical statement to put out there in a major way. Again, if we have that vision and we give people a sense of their gems, yes. you know, then now there's motivation. We know where we want to go. And if we also know in the process the pitfalls that will pull us away from that vision, we can prepare ourselves and be adult and reasonable about how we move forward. That's a key point, awareness of the pitfalls. Awareness, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and help in the process of the developing the strengths to get to that vision. Yes. So, and that brings us to the Unity Project, which is uh, my wife and my organization, where we're all about helping people develop those skills. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not just the vision, but how do you get there? So we're working with the high school to help our kids make that vision real. And we'll use some of those skills, working with Sandy Hook Promise, in the course of the next several months, we, we hope, mm -hmm. to uh, not only have this uh, um, public um, um, 
meeting mm -hmm. on the 11th of April, but follow that up with workshops where, mm -hmm. where we can start developing those skills as a community. And the voices of anger and the voices of division and bitterness have an option. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have to feel powerless and then therefore be angry. They can see that there's a, a, another kind of power we can harness, yes. and it's the power of our unity. Well, what you're saying is so important, and it reminds me of uh, a particularly poignant quote from Albert Einstein, where mm. he said, we can't solve a problem from the same consciousness that created it. And I think that's what we see happening Perfect. here. Perfect. And we all find ourselves in this kind of big experiment, you know, out of this horror. You know, how do we make something pure and wonderful? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the limits of what we can do are only confined by the courage we muster to create a, a noble vision. You know, it, it, and our, the outcome of this will be as, as wonderful as we have the courage to envision mm -hmm. a noble outcome. So um, I'm thankful to Sandy Hook Promise. I'm thankful to the Unity Project, to the Newtown Action Alliance, to the, um, to the, the REACH program mm -hmm. that's coming out of the Newtown Youth Academy, yes. to the Interfaith uh, Clergy Association, and uh, to all the other organizations that I don't know about mm -hmm. that are doing, you know, contributing to this work. Definitely a lot of gems in the community. A lot of gems. And uh, one last point for that is that any sustainable change, what we know from international development and what we know from psychological research and things is that for a sustainable change to happen, change has to happen on three levels at the same time. It has to happen on the legal level and the organizational level, mm -hmm. but that's not enough. It's also got to happen interpersonally, in, in the community, mm -hmm. a new way of talking to each other. And it's got to happen in our own individual heads. There has mm -hmm. to be a transformation that goes on in the way we manage our anger, our mm -hmm. fear, our anxiety. So that's why in these three, in these videos that we put together, we've tried to focus on each one of those levels. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to have a, a, an anti-violence campaign. Uh, we need to have a, trans a personal transformation process, a community transformation process, mm -hmm. and an, an organizational legal approach, Makes all at the same time. Sense. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Susie. Please join Dr. Woodall for a public presentation on April 11th at 7 p.m. at Newtown Middle School. And that will be followed by workshops on how to continue this dialogue within our families, on our parenting, and in our community. If you would like to be involved or host a resilient building workshop in your home, come on April 11th, meet Dr. Woodall, or you can contact the Sandy Hook Promise. The number there is 203-304-9780. Thank you.